Okay, so here we are back at the remote terminal. I've just logged in to from scratch 1.0. I don't think there's a, oh yes, there is an FS version. Uh, yes, that's right, I've treated into there, so it's ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is to go to the Linux from scratch one book and jump to basic networking and um, is it this one? No, it's not. It's internet servers. That's what we need. And I need to jump to fifteen dot one installing Telnet daemon and client. So I need to go into, I've got an extra directory here, oops, CD extra, with the additional programs that I'm looking to install. So the first one I'm going to do is this netkit telnet. So let's extract that. And I'll run in the patch, which I think off the top of my head is to um, patch Netkit Telnet to work with GCC 3.2. Um, yeah, there's no information there, but you can see the patches that I've created on the 20th of March. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it's to do. So I'll patch this with patch minus NP1 minus I. So that's those patched. And then I can run uh, configure. So I'll have to put full stop forward. Okay. Let's do this by hand. Configure. Minus minus prefix equals forward slash user as we do with other uh, packages. Let's check the spelling of that. Okay, that's done. Now I'm going to run make to build it. Okay, and then make install to obviously install it. And that's done. So next thing I want to do is to jump down to 15.9 configuring telnet. So create a new etc inetd.conf. So vi and insert these lines here and save. Then we've got to create an etc init d inet d boot script. Well, the paths have changed a little bit in the scratch 4.0. There actually, there is no init d there, but there is an rcd. Um, which you can see has got 
init's d init and that's where all the um, scripts are, the main scripts for uh, all the startup scripts. So we need to change this a bit here. So let's copy that and edit it. So vi, so it's going to be rc.d forward slash init.d inet.d, uh, sorry, inet.d. Insert to copy and paste this. Okay, let's try that again. Paste that in and let's go to the top and just check if there's any changes we need to make. So I need to change this to rc.d forward slash init.d inet.d. See if there's any other paths that might need changing. No, that all looks good. I'll just change these comments just so they're consistent. So rc.d and save that. Then we need to run this chmod, but obviously that path is different, so we need to change it by inserting rc.d. That's okay. And then the startup scripts we need to change, but as before with Linux and Scratch 1.0, for some reason it seems the default is in rc2, uh, which uh, I think is without networking, a single user without networking, but we want it to be. Um, uh, multi-user with networking so it's RC3 so that's a bit of change so let's copy that one there first so we're going to change into etc um, rc dot d then rc3 dot d then make a link to init dot d inet d s30 inet d yep that's okay so if we now look at uh, what we've got in here you can see s30 inet d is pointing to init dot d inet d so that's set up correctly the next one we've got is run level zero which is the startup the init run level so again we need to insert uh no sorry we're only dropping down one level so that can stay the same in fact these two should stay the same looking at them now so let's have a look at that oops ls minus l so K30 INET D is, sorry, this is the uh, kill, isn't it? This is the halt run level. Um, K30 INET D is pointing at INET D, sorry, uh, INET D and INET D, so that's okay. And then finally, the restart run level, run level six. Um, oh right, okay, looks like there's a spelling mistake there. There shouldn't be a space in there. So there's a mistake in the book. Let's have a look at that. So there it is there, K30, INET D is pointing at INET D, INET D again. So let's just double check we can access that. So INET D, INET D, and that's all okay as well. So the only thing that's remaining now to get this to work is the um, if we go back to look at the INET D script there's this start stop daemon binary which if you recall from Linux from scratch one is a single binary that's compiled from the D package um, package 
which is a, a Debian package. So we need to build that next. Uh, it's this file here. So let's extract that. X, XZVF D package. So let's find where that is. Um, it's in 12.7 according to my notes. So let's go to 12.7. There it is there, installing D package. So I've unpacked it. We need to go to the scripts directory. So CD scripts. Compile start stop daemon program by running make start stop daemon. Copy the following binary to sbin. So cp start stop daemon to sbin. And copy that man page as well. So start stop daemon dot eight to user man eight. So that should be done. So I'll tidy that up. And what I'm going to do now is to unmount proc, come out the root, unmount the LFS partition. I'm going to reboot. I'm not going to show the machine rebooting, but I'm going to let it reboot and we'll see if we can tell net into the LFS 4.0. If you remember, LFS 4.0 is the default to boot into. So I haven't got the screen at the moment because the screen's plugged into the screen recorder and that's not working at the moment. So I'm um, hoping that this will work. Otherwise, I'll have to reboot again into LFS 1.0 and find out exactly what went wrong. So I'll press Control Delete on the PC and wait for it to reboot. Okay, so it's just restarted. I'll hear a bleep soon, I hope. Oh, that's the floppy, if you heard it. Floppy seeking. Okay, so it's booting. I can see the dislike went on for uh, the loading of Lilo. And hopefully I'll see the... Di yeah, the dislike started up now. So it's loading the kernel. And yeah, there's lots of activity now. So it is, it is booting into something. And it seems to have quietened down now. So I'm going to try and tell net into this. Yep, we've got something. So that's looking promising. Log in. So now I'm going to do cat etc LFS. And yes, it's worked. We've got LFS version 4.0 that's booted automatically. And we've got a telnet server with which I can um, as you can see, access remotely. So what I'm going to do now is to go into the Beyond Linux and Scratch book uh, to compile these other tools. So the first one I'm going to do is OpenSSL because wget can use that and wget will be the next one that I build. So let's look for that. So bear in mind now we're in the native machine. There's no truth anymore. It's just should all be working as it is. Um, so I can just do CD sources oops, and then CD extra. And I'm going to extract Open SSL. And start by compiling this. So GCC issues a warning on every compilation. 
to fix this behavior, use Linux, PP Pro, Pentium, or K6, depending on your architecture. Right, so I'm not quite sure how we fix that here. Um, let's have a look at the configure command. In fact, what I'm going to do straight away is modify the PS1 here because I can't see what directory I'm in and I consider that to be quite dangerous. Um, so let's edit dot bash profile um, and I'll export ps1 equals I'll just refer to my notes so I don't have to think too hard about what I should set it to right so backslash u at backslash so it's the user at the host space backslash W is a working directory and then a dollar, oh, in fact it should be a hash because I'm the root and also I'll set the vimrc, oh it's already there, I've already set that, that's good, just set the ruler so that's okay, so I'm going to log out and log back in again, that's better, again this has dropped the dot zero off of the host name for some reason, um, but that doesn't happen on newer versions. So CD sources extra, and we're in open SSL. So let's have a look at the configure. So it's capital C. Uh, should have done the help there. So I can't really make much sense of that. There's not really that much of a help. So what I'm going to do is just ignore that. Um, they are just warnings, so it's not really a problem. And just copy and paste this all in. and wait for it to build. Uh, actually, I've just realized why I could probably do this. Um, I'll start again. Is to use C flags. That may be the way to override that warning. And it may be better in that um, probably get an improved uh, execution of the binary rather than it being locked down to um, 486 architecture. So let's clear up that OpenSSL, extract it again. So I'll run this set in first. In fact, and that one. And then I'll do C flags equals Pentium MMX because that's what I'm running on. And I'll do CXX flags just in case. March equals Pentium MMX and then the configure command to see if that 
has an effect on anything. Okay, let's just scroll back to the beginning. So it looks like it's using something called C flag and I can't see the C flags being set. Um, I guess I could try setting C flag. No, that doesn't seem to have made any difference. I'll put this back with C flags and CXX flags and um, it looks like it's just going to have to run as it is. So I'll just copy the rest of this and let it build. Yep, yeah, still getting the same messages. So it's a shame there's not... Um, any information on how to adjust that.
Okay, that's compiled. Um, there's nothing specific to be done. So that package. So let's. Uh, did I do everything? Yep. Tidy that up. So that's open SSL. I'm going to move on to do wget next. which as it says, it utilizes OpenSSL, so that's good. So fairly straightforward build instructions. Okay, that's complete. So should be able to run that. Yes, yeah, so that's fine. Um, in fact, let's try and download uh, wget itself. I'll use this address here and Change it to HTTPS. Okay, so maybe the certificate is still a bit out of date. Um, or the, not the certificates, the uh, connection. Okay, HTTP TP works, but you can see that's not a problem. Yeah, maybe the um, protocols are a bit out of date for OpenSSL. So apart from that, wget works. Um, so that's that. Let's get rid of that one. Um, I'm going to install OpenSSH as well, although I don't think that will have much benefit in terms of 
being able to connect to anything modern, but um, you never know, it's there to be used, I guess. So we need to add a group and a user for SSH. And build it with these instructions.
Okay, that's done. So next thing I'm going to do is to modify this SSHD config to allow root access as we haven't got an ordinary user at the moment. So permit root login, yes, just uncomment that. And then I'm going to copy this init D script together with its permission change and also these run level scripts which we'll call that init script so in theory if it's going to work which it may not do um, just calling sshd start it appears to have worked um, I'm going to try and SSH in, but I don't think, as I say, it'll work. No, you see, it hasn't got a, a key uh, exchange method that'll work. Let's try it from um, this server, which is slightly older. No, still not working. So it does only mean I can only access via uh, an older version of SSH, um, but at least it's there to be used if, if that's necessary. So let's now tidy that up. Uh, open SSH. And the last package I'm going to compile is links. So let's extract that. And while it's extracting, I'll look for it here to give us a text browser. I'll just copy this all in. It says that it's going to use SSL and Zlib in the instructions for the configuration. So I should be able to just copy that and wait for it to build.
Okay, so that's the Lynx text browser compiled. So I'm going to test this. Okay, so there's the server I've been using and let's look for links and there is the same web page, exactly the same web page side by side with a graphical and a text browser you can see the difference. So still quite legible, a bit harder to read maybe to pick out things like the commands but it's still perfectly usable to copy and paste stuff with. So that's all done. So that's all the packages I'm going to be installing. Got a bit of connectivity now uh, from within Linux from scratch 4 um, without having to use Truth or anything else to um, gain access either into the machine or from the machine to the outside world. So I'm going to be doing one more video and that's just to update the links uh, boot code um, to use the latest Lilo that we've got installed with version 4 because as I said previously the current boot code is probably the SUS 6.1 boot code. Um, I don't remember doing an update for Linux from scratch 1. I think probably because it was similar or uh, the same version as the SUSE 6.1 and it's um, quite quite risky operations to do so I didn't risk it but now we've got a newer version it's um, worth having a go at doing that so yeah I'll be doing that in the next video